Are you experiencing carburetor problems? Today we're going to fix some of those. After checking for vacuum leaks and other such things, correcting your timing and whatnot, it could be time to install a Weber tune-up kit. I'm going to be using this one from Redline today. We're going to install that unit in the truck and see what happens. Uh, this Weber has been on the truck for many, many years, probably 20 plus years, and I don't know if it's ever been rebuilt. It's got a small accelerator pump diaphragm leak, so we're going to just take a look at that and see what we can make better. This Weber has a new electric choke I installed on it in my electric choke video, so if you have any questions about installing that, just go ahead and check out that video. First we're going to take off the air filter here. That's going to reveal the top of your carburetor, and we're going to take out these four little guys right here and remove this plate. Oops, forgot to remove the choke linkage here. So, getting a little hung up on that. Gotta remove the choke linkage here. Now my red line kit actually comes with a replacement for this little unit right here which I did not have when I did the choke video. So if you're watching this now and you already did your electric choke, go ahead and do that. Or if you're thinking about doing your electric choke, you can do both at the same time and get a little replacement. Make sure and check that those are both the same size, both the old one and the replacement. Take out these three flat head screws that go around the side of this unit right here. It'll remove the choke and fast idle assembly. You need to take off this little tiny C-clip right here and be very careful to keep track of it. Very important. Just kind of take them off carefully with a screwdriver and be very careful not to bend it. Okay, now that you've got that unit off of there. This entire assembly can come out and you get to see what you're dealing with. Okay, now I can see inside there. See, there's a couple of little chunks of some stuff, but really not bad. And I always run um, an ethanol-free fuel and new good condition fuel filters, so that can really make a huge difference for you there. This uh, fast idle linkage and choke linkage here is absolutely filthy. Totally dirty right there. Could be something to do with a little bit of off-road action there. A lot of times people will have a little fitting installed right here and not a plug and just have it open the outside air. As you can see, that little guy goes directly right to this hole here. So that is something that you don't really want to leave exposed to open air. I've seen it a lot and it's just a great spot to just put a plug right in. Once you have all that taken apart, you're just gonna lift this entire assembly up, the choke assembly and fast idle, twist it and slide it back. This little guy right here just has a little spline on it and you just twist this guy 90 degrees straight up and down and slides backwards. Don't yank on it because if you bend these, it's gonna change the settings of how everything is calibrated. Put these three screws back in here for safekeeping. Oh, 
All right, now that will make a mess. This little widget's actually for battery acid, just kind of a squeezer. You squeeze it, sucks up the gas, squeeze it again, shoots the gas out. Works for all fluids, but you don't want to mix and match things that don't mix and match nicely, so I pretty much use it for gas at this point. Um, if it's an ethanol gas, it's totally gonna just dissolve the whole thing, so. Also, regular gas will kind of just dissolve it too. Just kind of dissolves. Okay, now the thing that I'm in here for is the accelerator pump that's leaking a little bit. You can see it's extra dirty around there, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off now. When you're working with carburetors, it's very important to stay organized because you'll be taking apart a bunch of little tiny things. So just keep everything very organized. Still got a little bit of fuel coming out there, but nothing like if we hadn't drained it. Now this is a springy widget, so you kind of watch it as you take it apart. Got this guy coming out the bottom. And a little bit of this and that going on there. Once again, just keeping everything organized here. Now we're gonna pop this guy off and there's that little spring. Little bit of Debris in there, yeah. Nothing horrible though. Gonna wipe everything out. This is one of those places where you just really want to be clean. You go ahead and wipe out our float bowl here. Get any debris out of there. Very clean float bowl. Probably because this truck has been run uh, basically constantly for years. Uh, this truck's got around 255,000 on it. So, a lot of use. Hasn't been sitting around a lot. Right down in here, there's a small fuel hole. It comes out to your accelerator pump here. This is a time to put on your safety glasses and gloves and just give or send a carbon choke or throttle body cleaner, whatever you got down that fuel hole. And watch it spray out here. And I put a rag right there just so I don't get carbon choke all over my wiring and rubber hoses and everything because they don't love carbon choke cleaner on them. You're gonna kinda wanna give that a second to evaporate before you go and stick a new rubber diaphragm in there too. Rubber just doesn't love carbon choke cleaner. You can also wipe it off with a little gas. Here's my new accelerator pump diaphragm from my red line kit. I put the spring back in front of it on the inside. It's gonna go in its little channel right here. It's just kind of where it lives. Now before we go and install this nice clean accelerator pump, we need to clean where it goes. Which is way back down there. And it has a little tiny contact under there. There's a little tiny contact under here and I can't quite show it in the camera because of a lack of light, but that's what you want to clean, right down in there. Now we're going to stack up our little parts. First we want the spring inside the accelerator pump housing, then the diaphragm, then the actual pump itself. These should have a little bit of tension on them because you're installing a spring, but there shouldn't be a ton of tension. So just go slow. And I like to install them in a crisscross pattern just to kind of evenly persuade that gasket and diaphragm in there. The torque spec on these is just tight enough. Uh, remember, you've just got some little machine screws going into some weak material here, so you just want to go slow and not go too tight. Well, that should solve my actual problem that I had, so that's nice. 
Now we're just going to take all these components out and clean them. These are really delicate components, so outside of just spraying some carbon choke cleaner at them, you can use some compressed air to kind of force any goo or crud that's in there out, and you just want to be really delicate with them. Red Lines kit comes with a nice replacement for this little washer, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull these two, this jet here on the bottom left and clean that one, then do the same on the others. Once again, don't make those too tight, very sensitive little components. Okay, here we just have the teeniest, tiniest fuel squirter component. It's got a little teeny tiny sprayer in there. And we've also got two little copper washers, so it goes washer, gas spraying widget, other washer, jetting. Those all go together like that. And then you're just going to clean this guy, try not to get sprayed in the face. Now what you really want to see is you want to be able to squirt some cleaner in there and see it come out there, then you know you're good. Nice clean, it needs to come out nice and clean too, not all nasty. Okay, and if your kit has new washers, go ahead and replace those. Again, we're going the jet widget, then a washer, then the fuel sprayer, all nice and clean and a washer. Um, if your kit comes with new washers, use those. All assembled like that. Now onto this guy. First we're gonna remove our nasty old gasket. Set that aside. Okay, we want to remove this little pin here so we can get our float off. Carefully set that aside in a clean area. And then carefully remove the needle there with the float. Now you want to investigate your float or look at it, make sure it's not damaged or anything. This one says Weber on it, so that's nice and comforting, a genuine Weber. Okay, you're being very careful not to bend any tabs or anything. I've got a dish full of water here. I'm going to use a technique called floating your float. So, shake your float and you see if it floats. If it sinks, it doesn't work. And that could be why you're having carb problems. If it floats, you're good. You can leave it there overnight, you can shake your float and see if you hear liquid in it. If it sinks or you hear liquid in it, you need to replace it. Okay, this is the replacement needle and actually seat that came in my kit. Um, I'm actually not gonna use it. It looks different from the one that I have and the one that I have works perfectly. But if Yours does not work perfectly, replace it. And I know some people might call me out in the comments for not replacing it with a new one that looks different. Well, I have the one that works and something that works, I'm not gonna change. So go ahead and put in a new one if you need a new one. And there are instructions in the book for measuring how to check the clearances on your float here. Make sure it's floating up and down. And if you're running off-road, you might need to have a different tolerance and just kind of play around with it if you find yourself flooding out and overflowing your float bowl at high angles off-road. The maximum fuel pressure on these units is 3 PSI, and if you're doing a lot of off-camber off-road, you might need to have 2 PSI. You just want to get a good regulator installed and mess with it a little bit. Looking at the old unit that actually holds the float in, I can actually see a lot of wear on there. It's actually legitimately skinnier 
than the new one in places from all of that wear of the float going up and down on those all those miles. And you also want to clean in here. Go ahead and clean that out really good. This little guy hooks in right there. So that when it goes up, it hits this contact and it hangs on lives on that one and then just kind of rides up and down. You want to make sure the end of this is in good condition because that's what stops the fuel flow. And if you're doing a lot of F-camber off-road, you might have to mess with these angles. Just kind of get what works for you. You want to be very careful and just not to mess with any of these. Uh, the tolerances are kind of small and you really don't want to break them. You also need to make sure that this little teeny guy right here is clean. You should see a little bit of cleaner coming out in the little brass or bronze tube right there. Okay, now that you've got all that installed and very clean, nice and ready to go. Um, this little guy right here is gonna slide around and that's okay because he's actually held in place by the housing of the carburetor. Now you wanna lay your new gasket on top of your old gasket. Make sure it looks the same. Make sure everything lines up nicely. Get all your holes lined up. Just make sure it's all gonna work. Now you've got everything nice and clean. Got all your new gasket on there, all your new parts installed. I'm going to install the screws on the back first and work my way forward. Just because of how the gasket was lining up, they looked a little weird. Again, I'm not going to tighten any of them all the way down, just going to install them. I'm putting all the same screws back in the same holes just because I find that they tend to go back in better even if they're technically the same screw. No power tools on these. Now the last two. And I'm just going to snug them all down but not tighten them yet. Just snug them a little bit. You know, make contact. You want to make sure that everything is coming together nicely, not getting hung up anywhere. I'm going to be accidentally squishing some little tiny thing that you didn't know about. Okay, now we're going to go in the middle. We're just going to make them a little bit tight. What we have left is our fast idle assembly here. It's a very dirty little unit. Definitely needs some cleaning. It's okay to put a little Teflon lube on this when it's clean or a throttle assembly lube. Well, that easily could have been the cause of my unstable fast idle. This is a high-end bike throttle lube, so it doesn't attract dust or anything. I'm gonna put on a little too much and then clean it off. It also works as a very expensive cleaner. Oh man, those parts are moving way smoother now. That's gonna be happier. Yeah, look at that. See how all these widgets work here? There's your little adjuster screw, little cam. Very cool stuff. There's a little electric choke. You can see the 
Biometal's moving that unit right there. Okay, that's all cleaned up and lubed up and excess lube cleaned off. It, even though it's a high-end bike throttle lube, it's, it's still gonna attract dirt faster than bare metal. No matter what they tell you. Hey, time to reinstall this unit. Now because I just put the screws back like this, I know exactly where the unit goes. The little unit is gonna be installed in this orientation. This right here is where your little widget is gonna slide in. You're gonna have to rotate 90 degrees, slide that in. And this is the one that goes up top with that little tiny C-ring and attaches with the little clip, clippy C-ring. So attach this one on the back and then this one. Okay, before you screw it in, you wanna kinda of guide this guy up in there so that it's all ready to get hooked on. Now you're gonna to wanna to put your screws in, but not all the way. Just kind of put them in, but not all the way. Now that it's time to attach this guy up here, you can grab the little adjuster widget that the bimetal is rotating. You can take this with one hand and turn it. That's gonna raise the arm up and down, bring it into position to hook up and right there. Okay, just slides right on there. And then you can use the little butterflies to kind of bring it the rest of the way up. Now my red line kit comes with a replacement for that little C-clip, so you're gonna to wanna to use the new one. And it's very nice to kind of have a backup for that unit. Okay, these little rings are kind of fun to install and you just have to be careful not to drop it in there. The metal on this little tiny clip is so thin that if you're not in the channel, you can easily just force it in. You wanna avoid forcing it in and just very carefully get that unit lined up there. It shouldn't take a ton of pressure to put it on there. For a more detailed installation and setup video on the Weber Choke, Go ahead and check out that video. Just gonna line up the little hole in the electric choke with the little right there. Ah, right, but first, you need to tighten up these guys. Forgot about that. Gotta tighten up these. The three holding the whole assembly on. Don't forget to plug that unit back into power. If you have any questions on powering that unit, check out the fender fuse block video. For the record, I'm reusing this gasket here. I'm gonna say I'm not super proud of that, but I didn't order another one, so. Reinstall this guy here. Now we're gonna reinstall that fuel line. Now you should be good to keep your fire extinguisher handy and give her a test fire. Um, this is not your tuning video. This is just your rebuild kit video. I know y'all are wanting that tuning video. That'll be coming soon. But for now, this is just your rebuild kit part install video. Uh, your float bowl is going to take longer to fill. So you're going to have to wait a second for your electric pump to run before you go ahead and fire her up. Um, if you have any tuning issues, just refer to the base settings in the manual in the red line kit. 
And if your truck won't run at all, just revert everything to the baseline settings in the red line kit, and you should be able to at least fire up on those settings and then mess with it until you get them right. Um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and comment any thoughts you have on this. I didn't remove the unit because the base plates tend to get a vacuum leak, and mine's not does not have a vacuum leak, and I worked hard to get it that way. So um, if you do remove the base plate, you can clean up the bottom in there. I just know mine really aren't dirty from looking at it in the past. Recently, when I got that adapter plate to not leak, so go ahead and take it all the way apart if you think that you may have an adapter leak there and make sure and use some gasket cinch on that and a little Loctite on your bolts there. So yeah, with that, let your electric pump run a little bit and give her a test fire and keep the old fire extinguisher handy.